chapter 8, Mishnah 12. The sages stated in the previous Mishnah that if the blood of an outer chatas is brought inside the heichal, the korban is disqualified. The following Mishnah contrasts that disqualification with the disqualification of yotze, going outside, which applies to any part of a koan that is taken outside the area in which it is supposed to be. For example, blood that is meant to be thrown on the mizbeach in the courtyard is taken outside of the courtyard. If an outer chatas had its blood received in two cups, the following rules apply. If one of the cups was illegally taken outside of the courtyard and its blood thus became unfit for zurika, the blood in the inner one, i.e., the cup that remained inside the courtyard, is still fit for zurika. The fact that some of the korban's blood was disqualified through having been taken outside the courtyard does not affect the rest of the, its blood. However, if one of the cups was illegally brought inside the heichal, which also makes the blood invalid, Tanayim disagree whether the effects whether this affects the blood in the outer cup, i.e. the cup that remains in the courtyard. Rabbi Yossi Aglili rules that the blood in the outer cup is valid, but the sages rule that it too became, becomes un, invalid. Rabbi Yossi Aglili uses logic to support his ruling, i.e. the blood remaining in the courtyard is unaf unaffected by the blood taken inside the heichal. First, he proves that the area outside, of the, outside the courtyard has stronger powers of disqualification than the area inside the heichal. On that basis, he argues that, since everyone agrees that blood taken outside the courtyard does not make the remaining blood invalid, as stated above, the blood taken inside the heichal sh should certainly not make the, blood, the remaining blood invalid. Rabbi Yossi Aglili said, since in regard to the place about which mere intent invalidates, namely outside the courtyard, this means, for example, that if someone slaughters a korban intending to apply its blood outside the courtyard, the korban immediately becomes invalid on account of the intent alone. Nevertheless, if some blood of a korban is taken outside the courtyard and thus became invalid, the blood left inside the courtyard is not treated like the blood that went out, but remains valid, as stated above. Then, in regard to a place about which mere intent does not invalidate, namely inside the heichal, this means, for example, that if someone slaughters a chatas intending to apply its blood inside the heichal, the korban does not become invalid. It is only logical that if some blood of chatas is taken inside the heichal and thus became invalid, the blood left in the courtyard should not be treated like the blood that went inside the heichal, but should remain valid. The area outside the courtyard has more power to disqualify than the area inside the heichal as we see from the fact that intent to apply blood outside the courtyard disqualifies the korban, but intent to apply blood inside the heichal does not disqualify it. Nevertheless, if some blood is brought outside the courtyard, the remaining blood, blood is still valid as taught at the beginning of this Mishnah. Therefore, if some blood is brought inside the heichal, which has weaker powers of disqualification, the remaining blood should certainly be valid. The Mishnah cites another dispute about the blood of an outer chatas that was brought inside the heichal. If blood was brought inside the heichal to atone for sin, i.e., the Kohen intended to apply it there, then even if it did not atone, i.e., he did not actually apply it, it is invalid. These are the words of Rabbi Eliezer. Rabbi Shimon says, it does not become invalid unless it atoned, i.e., it was actually applied. Rabbi Yehuda says, if he brought the blood into the Heichal mistakenly, it is valid. The disqualification applies only if the Korban deliberately brought the blood inside the Heichal. The chapter ends by teaching about the Tzit, the gold plate engraved with the words Kodesh Lashem, Holy Tashem, that the Kohen Gadol wore on his forehead. The Tzit has the power to cause some invalid offerings to be acceptable after the fact. The seat does not bring about the acceptance of any invalid blood placed on the Mizbeach, except in the case of blood that is Tame. This is because the seat has the power only to cause something that is Tame to be accepted, but it does not have the power to cause something that was taken out of the courtyard or became invalid in any other way to be accepted.